episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you've enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Someone once said that we are what we eat a statement I'd not dispute. But I think we might go a step further and say, at least with equal accuracy, that we are what we think. Curiously, though, our thoughts shape our lives, our very destinies. Most of us, as any psychiatrist will tell you, are motivated by thoughts so deep within our psyches that we're really not aware of them at all. In point of which, consider the strange case of Anton Stern. But Anton, please, Jonathan is dead. Our son died more than six months ago. Bella, why do you do this to me? Why are you trying to break my heart? Oh, my darling, break your heart. I'm trying to put the pieces back together again. By lying to me? By telling me that Jonathan is back and... But... This... He's playing now, in the studio, playing. Anton, I hear nothing. In the studio, practicing. It's Jonathan, I tell you. Come, Stella, come and see for yourself. Our son is alive. <laughs> Our mystery drama, Concerto in Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Marion Seldes and Ian Martin. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and imported Vigna Rosé wine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This is the strange story of what befell Anton Stern only a few years ago. A story few people know. Yes, I am talking about the celebrated conductor of the City Symphony. To begin this curious tale, I'll ask you to join me in the Stern's duplex apartment on Park Avenue in New York City. It is late afternoon of an overcast autumn day. In the gracious living room, we find Stella, Anton's lovely wife. And his equally attractive daughter, Rebecca. Oh, Mother, stop pacing up and down. You'll be worn out by the time Father gets here. I can't help myself, Becky. I haven't seen him in two months. You should have gone on tour with him. Or at least spent some time with him in one city or another. I would have you know that if Dr. Edmonds hadn't advised against it. Well, I'll never understand why. Granted, Edmund is one of the best psychiatrists in the country. But still, he felt you... that my presence during the tour might might be too much of a reminder of Jonathan's death. Well, you know as well as I that the tour was largely arranged as therapy. I never realized what mental depression could do to a person till Jonathan collapsed and died while recording the Paganini first violin concerto. Your father conducting. Oh, what a terrible shock. To see your son, only 20 years old, drop dead before your eye. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I brought it all back for oh, you. It's all right, Becky, dear. I, I expected Jonathan's death sooner or later. I was prepared for it. Your father wasn't. But he knew of Jonathan's condition, his congenital heart condition. Yes, but he never believed. It frightened me. The way he kept insisting that Jonathan was alive. Imagined he heard him practicing in his studio upstairs. Well, thanks to Dr. Edmonds, he recovered. And two months on tour has brought full recovery. <gasps> the 
you're here. Um, I, I, I'll answer the door, Olga. Becky, Becky, how do I look? Beautiful. Only don't look worried, Mother. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. Anton. Stella. Oh, Anton. Oh, Stella, my darling, my darling. Oh, I, I missed you, miss you so. I, I don't miss you know. too. I did, I did. I darling. too. Oh, how I've missed you, and it's good to be home, Stella. It's good to be home. Oh, Rebecca. Welcome home, Father. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you, my dear. You, you were kept in practice while I was away? Oh, yes. If I practiced any more, I'd have worn out the keyboard and the violin. The violin? Oh, why waste your time? How many times have I told you why waste your time on the fiddle when your brother's a prodigy? You stick to the piano and leave the violin to your gifted brother. Believe me, you... What is it? Why are you all looking at me? Well, you said... Well, you talk as if... As if Jonathan... Well, where is he? Why isn't he here to greet me? McNally, I thought you said... When when we talked on the phone, you said... I know what I said, and I know what I'm hearing. What? what? Antron. Where is he, that son of mine? Where is he? <laughs> oh, of course. In his studio. Always in his studio. Jonathan! I'm home. Your father's home. McNally, you said he was all right. He was. Heaven help us till we came through that door. He was. Anton? Yes, come in, Stella. All of you, come in. Are you all right, Anton? What? It's all right, hmm? No. To know that my only son is dead, that's all right. You you do know, then? Oh, yes. But for an instant there, a few moments, I was sure I heard him practice. Just as he used to. And I rushed up here to the studio only to find... emptiness. And then again, I knew he's dead. Dead. Do you want us to call Dr. Edmund? I'm all right. I'm recovered. We're as fully recovered as anyone can be after the death. His only son. You understand that? Your only son? Yes, I understand. What happened just now is just one of those things. Coming home after two months away, it got to me, that's all. Ah, how about a drink, Anton? It's been a long time and day for you. The plane trip from Seattle. And... Yes, yes. A drink would be good. Let's, let's all go down and have one. Come along, then, dear. Stradivarius. Jonathan Stradivarius. Who moved it? Who, 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 who? who? Well, well, don't just stare at me, all of you. The, the case, I, I, I placed it here on the table just so, with a bowl of flowers there and his photograph there, and, it, and it's been moved. Who's been touching this case, touching Jonathan's violin? Well, I didn't know that you... Wanted it untouched? Well, I said so. I made it clear. No other hand was ever to touch the strand. You? Father, I didn't know. I, I you didn't... You didn't? Father, it, it's it got to be kept in condition. It's a priceless Stradivarius. It's got to be played and you so that... you played it. You played Jonathan's violin. I'm Tom. It was never to be touched. I said that. I made it clear never to be touched. But Becky is your daughter, Jonathan's sister. She's not Jonathan. No. But I love you too, Father. Every bit as much as Jonathan did. Oh, I... I love you, Rebecca, but I... Never touch this again, please. It was his. It's all I have left to remember him. It's sacred to me. Promise me you'll never touch it again. I promise. <laughs> More wine, Mac? Uh, thanks, Anton, of course. It goes well with the beef. Uh, Olga is still the finest cook in the world. She certainly hasn't lost her touch while we've been away, Stella. No, and so long as she keeps her touch, I must be careful to keep her. You'd be astounded, McNally, at how many of our friends offer her more money to leave us for them. <laughs> uh, well, competition is competition. We lost Vladimir Blensky, thanks to it. The man who replaced Jonathan. You... Oh, 
glass slipped out of my hand. That was clumsy of me. No, no, of me. I'm sorry. Because you mentioned Jonathan? Huh. Nonsense. Nonsense. I tell you, I'm perfectly recovered. Yes, Father. We did lose Oblensky, as Max says. He was not the finest concert master we ever had. Jonathan was that. No one can ever take his place, but Oblensky was good. Very good. Very good. He left us in Seattle. Uh, tomorrow I must try out another a, a, a woman, Saskia. Uh, uh, Saskia, what's her name again? My... Rubens. Better than Oblensky, ask me. <laughs> no, not as good as Jonathan. No one can ever, will ever replace him in the orchestra. Or in my heart. Uh, speaking of Jonathan, Anton. Beckwell has asked me to talk to you again about releasing the Paganini first violin concerto. You know my answer. Oh, but, Anton, it was, if not the finest, certainly one of the finest things that Jonathan ever did. And it Killed him. Anton, you can't say I can and I do, Stella. As for you, Mac, it was without doubt the finest thing he ever did. Do you know why? Because he wanted it to be. He practiced and practiced and practiced until I warned him that he would kill himself if he didn't stop. His heart. I, I knew his heart wouldn't take it. But the heart attack, it could have struck at any time, anywhere. Oh, he was determined, my son, Mac. Determined to play it to perfection. Perfection! And he did. And because of it, he... He died in front of my, my very eyes. Oh, my father, owner. father. Leave me alone. But, father... Rebecca! Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anton, she loves you as much as Jonathan did, perhaps even more. More? Impossible. No one ever loved me as much as Jonathan. But perhaps you never gave anyone else, gave, gave Becky the chance. Oh, why are you badgering me like this? Anton, Anton, where are you going? To the studio. And please, leave me alone there. Ah... Uh... I'm sorry, Stella. It's not your fault. You know how it's always been. With Anton, the sun rose and set on Jonathan. Becky, she was always second in his affections. And now, with Jonathan gone, she wants to be first. Huh? No, no, I don't think that. I think, oh, I don't know. A young girl yearning for, reaching out for her father's love, that's all. She loves him. She wants him to love her, that's all. Is it our... What do you mean? Jonathan is gone, Stella. But you know as well as I, he still stands between Becky and her father. She's very pretty, Mac. Uh, what, Becky? Oh, Saskia. Yes, and let's hope she plays as good as she looks. Maybe we ought to move to one of the back rows. Why now? Well, I can see she's nervous. You know, a tryout. I'm sitting here. Maybe she just... Oh, <laughs> forget it. Saskia Rubens is a pro. We all pros have nerves. All right, gentlemen, let's get on with it. <clears throat> Are you, uh, ready, Miss Rubens? Yes, Maestro. Oh, we can take any moment you wish. Well, it doesn't matter to me, Maestro. Whatever you want. Huh? I see. <laughs> You're very confident. Oh, why shouldn't I be? I wouldn't be here for a tryout if I wasn't good. Oh. Well, well, we'll try the first movement after the introduction. Uh, um, Miss Rubens... Perhaps you'd rather try the rondo... Well, what was wrong? You ask me what was wrong. You don't know? No, I don't. You don't know. You're playing notes, not heart. That's what's wrong. Notes without heart. You might as well tear up the music. We'll try it again. This time with expression, Miss Rubens. Hello. Here we go. What now? 
I don't know. Miss Rubens. That, that fingering. Yes, maestro. Where did you get it from? Get it from? I, I, I don't know. I, I suppose I've always used that fingering. You copied it. I beg your pardon. You heard my son or a recording in which he used that fingering. Well, of course I've heard your son. I've heard every recording he ever made, but I've never copied... Well, unconsciously, perhaps unconsciously, Maestro, you... Maestro, I have never copied anyone, including your son. Ah. Well, then again, we'll, uh... We'll try it again. Oh, what, Mickey? Well, no. No one ever played that passage with exactly that fingering but Jonathan. Because no one else ever could. By heaven, I think you're right. But if you are, Becky, what does this mean? I don't know what it means, Mac. I wish I did. Saskia Rubens using the same fingering as Jonathan Stern? Is it a coincidence? Or is some arcane force at work? Even Rebecca Stern is confused and unable to say what is taking place. Well, perhaps matters will be clarified when I return shortly for Act Two. Jonathan Stern, child prodigy and, at 20, solo violinist of the City Symphony under his father Anton, died suddenly. Anton fell into a deep depression. Recovered, or so it seemed, he took the symphony on a two-month tour, from which he returned a few days ago. <laughs> City Concert Hall, as Anton tries out a new solo violinist, Saskia Rubin, something strange and baffling seems to be happening. Stop! Stop! Is this some kind of joke, Miss Rubin? Some kind of grisly joke? I don't know what you mean, Mark. No one has ever fingered that passage played it the way you are, except my son, I, my dead son. I've told you, I don't know anything about that. If I am using his fingering, it, it, it's an accident, a coincidence. Accident? Coincidence? Mac! Hey, Santo. You heard, is she using Jonathan's fingering or not? Well, she seems to be, yes. But, Father... And Mac... But, Mac, has anyone but Jonathan ever used that fingering? That's it, I know. Father! If this was an accident, Miss Rubens, it's the kind of accident I won't stomach. And I warn you not to repeat it. You needn't worry about that, maestro. I won't be here to repeat it. That's fine with me. You can get out. Father, will you listen to me? What, Rebecca, what? You've forgotten something. Jonathan was the only one who ever used that fingering because no one else ever could until now. Oh, yes, you're, you're right. Only a prodigy, a, a genius like Jonathan could... How could I forget? Well, you were shocked and upset. But she, Reuben, she... As I said, it's just an accident. No, 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 Rebecca, not that at all. Don't you see, daughter? Don't you see? Well, of course. <laughs> By the greatest good fortune, you found someone else to replace Jonathan as a soloist. Replacement? She's no replacement. She is Jonathan. What do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? Well, why, he's returned. His spirit. That wasn't Saskia Rubin's playing. That was Jonathan. And, and the fingering of her hand, but... Jonathan's spirit in that hand. Oh, Anton, Why, don't you listen. see? Don't you see? It was Jonathan's way of telling me he's returned. Mac, get her, Rubens. Get her back for me. Oh, now, the way she stormed out, I'm not sure I can. You can. You will, Mac. You, you must. Well, Becky, good to see you again. Sit down. Cigarette? Thank you, Dr. Edmund. Thank you. I read about your father's triumphant tour, I suppose it's called. 
Nothing but praise and acclaim for the orchestra and him. How is he? Did the tour turn out to be the therapy I felt sure it would be? Well, that's why I'm here. I need your help for me as well as my father. Something went wrong? Well, when he arrived home nearly a week ago now, he thought... Well, it only lasted a few minutes. He thought Jonathan was still alive. That he could hear him practicing in the studio. Hmm. Well, of course, when he went to the studio and Jonathan wasn't there, he realized it was just his imagination. Well, these relapses do happen. Yes, but but the strangest thing happened yesterday afternoon. He was trying out a new violinist, Saskia Rubens. Well, yes, yes, I've heard of her. Well, during the tryout, she played a passage the way Jonathan played it when he was alive and... She used the identical fingering that Jonathan, only Jonathan, could use. And my father saw it, heard it. Hmm. Another little relapse? Huh? I saw it and heard it, too. Oh? Father thinks that Jonathan has returned to him. That using Saskia's body, his spirit and his genius has come back. And you? What do you think? Well, I don't know what to think. I, I, I've i never been so confused. That, that's why I'm here. Well, I treated your father's melancholia. Then when he went on tour, treated you for a milder, much milder depression. And once you faced the reason for your depression, you snapped out of it. Becky... What was... Tell me again. Put it into words. What was the reason for your depression? Ah, come now, Becky. Say it. I was glad Jonathan was dead. Why? Because he always stood between my father and me. That my father loved him more than me. He did. He did. All my life, I'd wanted my father's love. And when Jonathan died, I thought at last I'd have it. But I haven't. <laughs> Especially now that he believes. <laughs> that he believes. <laughs> that he believes Jonathan has returned. Yes. Yes. And that, Becky, is why you're confused. Unhappy. <laughs> You've allowed your brain to recreate the ghost we got rid of together, you and I. <laughs> Becky, Jonathan has not returned. Rubens, this fingering of hers or whatever, she plays that way, that's all. As simple as that. Oh, you can convince me. But no one will ever convince my father. Yes, well, someone, if not me, someone else said better. Because if he doesn't realize what he's come to believe just isn't so. Yes. If he doesn't... He'll lose his mind, Becky. Anton. Hmm? Oh, yes, Stella? Come down and have some lunch. All you do is sit here in Jonathan's studio holding his Stradivarius, fondling it, caressing it. It was his... He loved it. I love it. Yes, I know, but... And I've had a thought. Sitting here holding the strad, it, it's brought Jonathan closer, helping him to... Commun Anton. Communicate. Anton. He gave me the thought. What thought, Father? Oh, Becky. At the concert tomorrow night. Saskia Rubens will play this Stradivarius... Jonathan Stradivarius. But you said no one must ever play it again. That no other hand but Jonathan's must ever touch it again. It will be Jonathan's hand that plays it tomorrow. Anton, my dear. It will help Jonathan, his spirit, help it to return. Why don't you understand? It's only Saskia's body that sits there, but it's Jonathan who plays. Her hands become his. It will be his hands that hold the strand. Play it. Tomorrow night. No. 
Huh? It will not be Jonathan's hand. It will be Saskia Rubin. I tell you... Betty, you're deluding yourself. And worse, you're letting your mind, your emotions get out of control again and play you tricks. And if these tricks go on, you will go mad. Oh, you sound like Dr. Edmund. Well, I'm telling you what Dr. Edmund said. I've just come from seeing him. Seeing Edmunds? You? Yes. I needed help for a depression of my own. Oh. oh well, I, I'm, I'm glad you went to Edmunds. Oh, why should that upset me? After all, we, we were all saddened by Jonathan's death. I was not saddened. I was glad. Becky, oh my you, God. You were glad? Glad Jonathan was dead? Yes. Yes. And I'm sorry I was glad. I'm sorrier than I can tell you, but I couldn't help myself. You've got to understand. Understand? And I... What kind of sister were you to rejoice in her brother's death? What kind of woman are you to be happy at anyone's death? What kind of daughter to take pleasure in my sorrow? Oh, Father! Get out! Get out of the studio and never, never, do you hear me? Never set foot in it again. Father! Out! Out of the studio! Yes, and out of my life! Why? Why, Mac, must you talk about this now, minutes before I go on? I know it's not exactly the best moment, but Vic will ask me to ask you again. And tell him the answer is no, and it will always be no. The Paganini killed Jonathan. But I'm told... Don't you understand why I can't release it? I couldn't bear to hear it. I'm sorry, Anton. Forgive me. <sighs> it's time. You gave Saskia the strad? Yes. And told her why I want her to play tonight? I did. And what did she say? She said... Oh, yes, 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 yes. She said, tell him Saskia Rubens is the virtuoso tonight. Not Jonathan Stern. We'll see. We shall see. Come. extent he was. Pascal Rubens can play like that? Pascal Rubens is tonight's virtual Mac, Mac, what in the world? Why is that song yelling at Pascal? No one but Jonathan Stern. What's happening to him? Listen to him. It's not you. Not you. He's talking to Saskia. Is it? No. It's burning in your body, in your head. Mac, Mac, he's gone crazy. Mac, he's out of his mind. Oh, good Lord. Jonathan, you come back. And you're here. Play my God. Play. Look, he's swaying back and forth. He's yeah, fighting. Somebody catch him. Oh. I'm done. Oh. In a moment of high drama, certainly never before witnessed in the concert hall, Anton Stern crashes across the podium to lie unconscious on the stage floor as the audience and the orchestra sit in shocked astonishment. I'll return shortly for Act Three. Unable to face the death of his son, Anton Stern, conductor of the City Symphony, vacillates between reality when he knows Jonathan to be dead and fantasy, when only minutes ago he believed Jonathan's spirit had taken possession of violinist Saskia Rubens in the rendition of the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. Now in Anton's dressing room... He lay him on the couch. <coughs> now gently, <coughs> gently, lads. Uh, thank you, boys. 
Well, close the door as you go out, will you? Mark? Mark? Ah, uh, take it easy, Anton. You're going to be all right. Oh, well, what, what happened? I, I, I must have fainted. I, I don't remember. Yes? Stella and Becky, let us in. How is he? Oh, Anton, Anton, what happened out there? I... I don't remember. I... Uh, you, no. Wait. Uh, it, it comes back to me now. Yes, Father. What? J- Jonathan. It worked. It worked. What worked? This trad letting Saskia play John's violin tonight. It, it brought him back from the dead. Anton, you must stop believing oh, such still, nonsense. I tell you, he was there before me on the stage, using Saskia, her body, her hands. The Strad is the link, the bond that holds Jonathan to this world. We can keep in touch, my son and I. Through that strand. Father, you must. Don't tell me what to do or not to do, Rebecca. You think I don't know what you're up to? Up to? You wish to keep us apart, your brother and I. No. Because you were always jealous of him, envious of him. No. You told me, he admitted you were glad he was dead. Anton, she never meant that. She said it. Get her out of here. Anton. Out of my sight. Out. In heaven's name, Anton. It's all right, Mac. I'd better go. Oh, he's out of his mind, Mac. He's out of his mind. Get the strad from Saskia, Mac. Just as soon as... No! Get it now! You needn't tell me why you're here, Becky. The papers are full of what happened last night. Yes, but Dr. Edmonds, they say nothing about what went on in my father's dressing room afterward. Nothing about... Jonathan Stradivarius. Why, no. Tell me. Well, you know that after Jonathan died, my father put the Strad in its case and closed it and placed it in Jonathan's studio, flanked by vases of flowers, a sort of a a shrine. Yes. And also, it was his intention that no one should ever play it again. Yes, so it came as a shock to us all when he decided to let Rubens play it at last night's concert. Why did he do a thing like that? He got it into his head. That Jonathan was using Reuben's body to return to Earth. And if Reuben's played Jonathan's favorite violin... It would doubly ensure Jonathan's return. He's... He's convinced it did? Absolutely certain. Hmm. What else happened last night, Becky? Well, he... He believes that I want to stand between him and Jonathan. That I always was... Envious and resentful of Jonathan. And well, you were. Well, I know. But you cured me of that. You made me realize it wasn't Jonathan's fame I wanted, but but my father's love. And now that I want it more than ever, and, and want to give him my love to comfort him, <laughs> he refuses to see me. He'll change his mind. I don't think so. Yes, he will. He loves you, Becky. Loves you every bit as much as he ever loved Jonathan. Oh, then why hasn't he ever shown it? Maybe he's never thought he had to. Maybe he's always believed you knew it. Oh, he's never said... Exactly. Never said. Never opened his heart in words. (laughs) That's half the trouble with the world, Becky. Is it too late for us, my father and me? It may be. So much depends on how deep he's gone into this psychosis of his. Psychosis? He's become fixated on the Stradivarius. Well, there are two ways to cure a fixation. You can either gently pry the patient away from it, a procedure that can take years, or you can risk smashing it. And in my father's case? Knowing him as I do, I would be for smashing it. There's risk involved, grave risk, but also calculated risk. The question in my mind is... Yes, yes. Are you willing to take that risk? I? You. Put it another way, Becky. Do you love your father as much as you think you do? Love him enough to risk his life and yours? Anton, put 
the Stradivarius back on the table. Stop holding it, fondling it, caressing it. It will bring him back to me. He'll come. I know he'll come. Anton, dearest Anton, you delude yourself. Jonathan is dead. There is no such thing as death. You believe in life? I want to believe. I love to miss him as much as you, but I won't. I can't delude myself. Leave me, Stella. Leave me alone. Come downstairs. I'll have Olga make tea. No, I, I, I'll stay here. Anton. Here. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. I'll pour. Mac, you'd rather not have a drink? Oh, no, no, Stella. Tea's fine. If we could only persuade him to see Edmund again. Oh, I tried. It's no use. I lay it on the line, Stella. This could mean the end of Antoine's career. Don't say that, Mac. Every penny had to be refunded for the concert the other night. The board of directors called me on the carpet this morning. They know there's something seriously wrong with Anton. Well, I'm afraid we know that, too. And then there's Bakewell. He says the recording company will sue if Anton goes on refusing to release Jonathan's last recording. Oh, Becky. Mother. Mac? Oh, boy, get those eyes. Oh, you poor kid. This has really got you down, hasn't it? But not out, Mac. I've just come from seeing Dr. Edmonds. Well, why did you go to see Edmonds? What good can he do? Your mother's right, Becky. Now, don't get me wrong. Edmonds did his best, but it wasn't good enough. He's upstairs, brooding in Jonathan's room. If he isn't already mad, Becky, he soon will be. But that's why we've got to do something drastic. What do you mean, drastic? Edmonds says that father's become fixated on Jonathan's violin, the Strad, because... In effect, it replaces Jonathan physically. It's all that's left of Jonathan. Well, I think we're all aware of that. Yes, well, Edmund says there are two courses open to us. One would be the treatment that would take years and might not be successful. And the other is to take the drastic action that I just mentioned and smash the fixation. Smash it? To bits. But if we take the second course, in Edmund's words, it could kill father. And me. What do you mean? I mean that if I fail... You? You will do this, whatever it is? I'm the only one who can. If I succeed, Father will be well again, and and in another way, in a, in a special way, so will I. But if I fail, he, he can... Well, he very likely will be driven into hopeless insanity, in which case he'd be better off dead. And you? Becky, you... Oh, I'd be better off dead, too. <laughs> One played the Tchaikovsky the way Jonathan did. No one ever could. Genius. Sheer genius. Mac, you heard him, and you, Stella. Anton, eat your dinner. It's getting cold. All go more wine, please. You're drinking, too. And even practicing. Why, when he practiced up there in the studio, I would listen for hours on end. Such sweetness of intonation, such delicacy of fingering and bowing, and oh, why, I can hear that now. So clearly, so sweetly, I would almost swear he was in the studio now, practicing this very minute, practicing. I enjoyed his practice, too. Why, it was a privilege to hear him, Anton. <laughs> you know, if I shut my eyes, I believe I could almost hear him. Anton? I do hear him. What? No, 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 no. Listen. Listen. I hear nothing. I, I do. Oh, no, Anton. I hear him. He's come back. His spirit came back. The studio. He, he's there now. Jonathan. Jonathan. Stella. Jonathan. Please, God, make it work. Jonathan. Jo I'm practicing. What else? You? You in your hands, his... 
His violin, you dare? I don't see what's so daring. You are not to play it, not to touch it. I warned you, it is Jonathan's violin. Jonathan. Well, seeing that Jonathan's dead. He's not dead. His spirit lives. Well, so does mine, and so does my body. He can't play it. I can. He played it last night. Oh, he... Reuben's played it, not Jonathan. Just as I'm playing it now, not Jonathan. Sacrilege. Give me that. No, I'll smash it first. Are you out of your mind? No, you are. You can think of nothing but Jonathan, always Jonathan. And because of that, you become fixated on this this piece of wood and cat gut. Oh, cat gut. You think you're the only person in the world who mourns Jonathan. You think you're the only one with feelings. You think Mother didn't die a death with Jonathan. That I didn't. That Mac didn't. Oh, you selfish man, crying and begging for a little thing that was Jonathan this fiddle. Give it to me. All right, very well, I'll give it to you. But first, over my knee. Oh, no. And then against the wall. No. 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 Ian, take it. Splinters. Pieces. Becky, Becky. Becky. How could you do this? Oh, because I love you. And you love me. Oh, Father, I can't bear it, but I must tell you. That look on your face. It isn't the Strad. It's a copy. No, not the Strad, Jonathan Strad. Could I destroy that? But, but oh, you... even if I could. There was no need. It wasn't a violin that had to be destroyed, only what it meant to you. I didn't break a violin. I, I broke your madness. Do, do you know? I, I think you did. When, when you smashed it, splintered it, inside me, something, I, I, I don't know, it, it's... Smashed and splintered, too. But it might not have. You might have been smashed and splintered. It was a risk I had to take. And you took it, Becky. Because you love me. I've always loved you. Didn't you know that? Oh, yes. And I love you. Only. Only what? Till now, I... Oh. I never knew how much. They say that when something is broken and mended, it is stronger than ever before. Does that apply to the human heart, do you suppose? I don't know about yours, but my heart's been broken more than once, and I'm still around. Well, my heart may not be stronger... But it's a lot wiser. Yours too? I'll be back in a moment. Speaking of wiser hearts, as we were, Anton Stearns is much wiser. One thing Anton learned after a long chat with Dr. Edmonds was to tell someone of the love within him. Honestly, we just don't do it enough, none of us. Our cast included Ian Martin, Marion Seldes, Carol Titel, and Lon Clark. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I can't understand why you keep asking people to take you away with them, Lucas. I think you ought to make up your mind... To get out of here, Mr. Albertson, not just so as you can take me with you, but for your own good. Maybe they'll still let you go. Let us go? Well, damn well let us go if we want to go. I sure hope so. We could still leave tonight. Better chance to get away after dark than in the daytime. Now, look, you're... You're going to have to explain that, Lucas. If you want us to take you away with us in case we go, well, you're going to have to tell us what is going on here. Well, they're all dead, you know. 
Uh, not me. I don't think. But all the rest of them's dead as dead can be. Been dead for years. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear